We are here with Rob Canton from England, who just got in the top eight at the first World Championship here in San Jose for Flesh and Blood. Woo! Yeah, man, congratulations. It's been such a ride the last few days. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm so tired now. <laughs> like it's, it's like seven o'clock or something like that, um, Sunday evening, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty tired. Yeah. Yeah, man. Tell me, uh, like, how has the ride been the last few days? You've traveled here to San Jose. Who are you traveling with? Yeah. Um, so, a few of us um, are staying in an Airbnb close by. So, there's five of us. There's um, Hamish and Simon, the two guys from Push the Point, who I imagine a lot of you guys know. Um, and then a couple of the uh, other English guys, so uh, Jacob Hand, um, who also played the same deck as me, and Francesco Giorgio, who's an Italian guy who lives in the UK. Um, so yeah, it's an Airbnb about a 10 minute walk away, so yeah. yeah. Awesome, and uh, when did you arrive here in San Jose? Uh, so we got here last Wednesday. Um, I think we arrived at like 6 p.m., something like that, in the evening, so we're all pretty tired from, from the flight. Um, but yeah, it was pretty, pretty good flight. That's great, yeah. And how are you feeling after the top eight? Like, were you a little bit disappointed or...? I was disappointed. Um, there was a point during the game for anyone who's watched it where something, some luck went a little bit not my way. Um, which is what it is. I, I'm really happy with how I played. And I think it was a lot closer than he thought it was going to be, which was nice. Um, and ultimately, I, I, could walk, I was walking away feeling so happy. Like, people were concerned, like, they were like, are you okay? Like, are you... He, he's really disappointed. I'm like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm really happy still. So, yeah. Yeah. Maybe for those who didn't watch the stream, can you tell us how the game went? So we're playing the fine mirror. For anybody who knows uh, the draft format, if you win the dice roll in the fine mirror, it's same as same constructed. You want to go second, mainly because there's not really a huge amount you can get done going first. Um, and I didn't have one of my going first cards, so I didn't have one of the this rounds on me. Um, or energy potion, which is what you want to do if you're going first, which meant that he gets to start. He gets to start his turn one by attacking me, and then the game usually goes in the fine mirror. One person attacks, like he goes second, so he attacks me first. Then I hit him, then he hits me, and then usually the person who had to go first ends up dying first. So, yeah. Okay. How much life points did he left? Oh, he was left on one at the end of the game. So, Dude. so I hit him with a engulfing flame wave, and I had to hit an attack that cost zero or one, of which there are many in the fire deck. And I hit an art of war. Um, so if I would have hit an attack for zero or one, I would have dealt him two of my damage that turn. And then when he's left on one at the end of the game, obviously, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the tournament before, like the top eight, they do and they won. How did you make? Um, of day one of Worlds. Yeah, that's right. Oh, so I went 8 0 8 on the day one of Worlds. So 3 0 my draft with drafting Phi. <laughs> and then five rounds of Phi and CC, which uh, won all of them. Um, I played against one of the hardest rounds in CC was against Azalea, which is <laughs> a bit of a peculiar one. I had to pick up and read some of his cards. Um, but yeah, uh, can't complain really. Just stick to Phi. Yeah. And the second day was Blitz, right? Yeah, so I started off one and two in draft, which was I was pretty sad about. Given I drafted a really good five deck again, um, and then I played chain in blitz, so five rounds of chain, which is the deck that I made the top eight of uh, New Jersey calling with. So like chain is my uh, yeah the hero I've definitely got the most games with. Uh, I went three and two in blitz, which was enough to get me uh, seventh place. Yeah. Okay, so. Um I'm really interested to hearing your opinion about uh, the future because this was the first Flesh and Blood World Championship, right? Yeah. Something really special. How did you feel to be part of it? But what made you feel like going into the next year, now after this event? To be honest, when I got here at first, I was a little bit, I don't know, I was a little bit skeptical of like a few things. Like I wasn't sure, quite sure about the venue. I wasn't quite sure about like um, the city that we're in, things like that. But I mean, it just got better and better and better as the weekend went on. Obviously, it, it, that is going to happen when you win a lot. Um, but honestly, like everything's just been so good and meeting so many people uh, who I haven't met before, and just and just yeah, it's, it's just been an amazing weekend, and I can't, I can't wait for the next one. And I think I think it's a really good launch pad to send us, in, send us into next year because it's just such a good way to end the year. Um, and I think I think the event 
was ran really well. Um, so yeah, all, all great things to be honest. Yeah. And for the next year, do you want to continue in Flesh and Blood? Oh, a million percent. In, I'm looking so much looking forward to the to January Pro Quest season and Leeds has got a battle hardened where I'm from. So yeah, really looking forward to that. Will you also go to the Belgium one or? Um, I, I didn't actually think about that. Maybe Belgium's not too far from England, so yeah, maybe yeah. All right, yeah. Stoked to see you again for sure. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So um, let's jump into the deck. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, um, playing Fi, um, as you can see here. One quite interesting about our deck, the, way, the decision that we made, is only one of these. So a lot of the lists you'll see, especially the Americans playing, they play uh, three of these, um, mainly because they want to play Flame Call Awakening. So that's something that we decided. We'd, Flame Call Awakening is really good, but drawing this card in your hand is something that we just never want to do. So we put this card in the graveyard at the start of the turn, at the start of the game, and then we never have to draw it again, which is such a big deal for us. So that's the start of that. Um, in the main deck, so I'm going to go through the main deck first. Uh, we're only playing one Minoism. Um, there's another one in the sideboard uh, lower down, but the reason for this is just because you can't. Sometimes you just can't afford to draw two cards that don't do anything. Like you can, obviously, you can play Minoism sometimes, but basically, for all intents and purposes, this card has no text. It just has block two blue. And for the situations where you draw your blue for the turn as Minoism and you draw a belittle, obviously that's awkward because if you have the Minoism and the belittle, you can't do them both. But you just you just ask them the belittle and wait for next turn. So it's not such a big deal. So we went for just one Minoism in the main deck and the three red belittles. Um, the next card, which is quite interesting, is uh, three ancestral empowerments. So this is something that um, a lot of fire decks these days aren't playing. And at first we weren't playing it either because you play a lot of cards that aren't uh, ninja cards, for example, Belittle, and also like Phoenix Flame is a Draconic card, which, you know, some of the best, best cards in the deck are Draconic, not Ninja, which means this card does have a failure rate, but one great thing about having a failure rate is this number here. If it says block three and it has a failure rate, it's never going to be that bad, because you know it's just block three. Block two cards with failure rates are a lot worse, in my opinion. Um, and another card that, that Ancestral Powerman pairs really well with is uh, Engulfing Flame Wave. So we have three of them in the, the main deck. And we actually play this into everybody. Uh, I'll just move some of these cards out of the way. So we play three Engulfing Flame Wave into everybody. Um, because Oldham these days, uh, and also Bravo, even the decks like that, you know, you would think something like this is a little bit awkward against because they can block really well. They're actually wanting to attack you back. Um, so presenting something that's like a really good on hit like this, um, especially when you have the, the tricks like Art of War and Essential Empowerment, can be, you know, can be game winning. And I've certainly won a lot of games through this. Unfortunately, the game in the quarterfinals of Worlds, I actually lost because this card missed. But you know, if it was something, you have to sometimes just take the risk. It's a bit of a Kano card. You have to like flip the top card and just hope sometimes. Um, and then onto the finishers. So this deck is also playing uh, to take the tempo. So a lot of fire decks out playing this right now. Um, we found again. I mean, block three again is a really good, really good part, part of this card, really. So we can always just throw this away to that. Um, but again, we, our, our deck is really focusing on on hits. So like from the flame wave to the tempo, we also have three snatch. So we're like really focusing on the on hits, and obviously five players mask of momentum. Um, so we're just trying to focus on the opponent having as many things to worry about um, about actually hitting and that should hopefully you know, put enough pressure on them so that we don't get hit too, too much back. Um, and then the other finishers are obviously the, the must-haves of the, the Lava Bursts, uh, which every fire deck will have. Um, moving on to the rest of the deck, so again these are a lot of cards that every fire deck will have, so like three Rising Resentment, three Spreading Flames, three Red Martin Angers, three Running Renegades, these are all cards that the Fire Deck will always play. Four, three Blades Headlong, three Brand of Cyndaclaw, just as many of these as you actually can. And when we get to the sideboard, I will show you that we would actually play more of these if we could. So more of like, if we could play three more Running Renegade, we would do in an instant. Because um, there actually is a few slots in the deck missing. Like, we just want three more Draconic like, starters. Um, and they need to be cheap, so you can't, we, we can't really put in cards like, um, we can't really put in cards like, or Soaring Strike, the one for four go again because we need it to be cheap. And like the zero cost ones, when you start getting to, when you to put all these cards in, 
you start getting to like love and loyalty red or like actual normal head jab and they have like their downsides so yeah uh, so those are all the cards that every five deck plays and again three out of war every five deck would play in this um, and yeah not much to say about what really everybody knows how good this card is and it's an integral to the deck like a really good a really big part of it is um, saving this for your five card turns so if you can arsenal them out of war so that next turn you have a full card full hand of four cards um, the card just works better when you have as many cards available to you as possible uh, then we're moving on to the blues so the blues are actually quite um, again quite different to some of the other fire lists that you'll be seeing we were playing two blue mountain anger so we wanted a starter um, as in, when I say starter, I mean a go again draconic card, which will enable like searing ember blood and so on. So we wanted a starter which um, isn't quite as meek as like Brand of Syndicore, because coming in for one is often quite ignorable. Whereas Martin Anger Blue um, it comes in for two, which obviously is one more, and the on hit gets you a point of damage. So this a blue one will be often one for three damage. So we wanted some. We wanted that just to pump the numbers up a little bit. Um, we're also playing more blues than other fire lists, so we're playing I think a total of 15 blues in the main deck and we can board up to like 17 in Icelander matchups, um, which I think is a, a yeah, very different different take. So those are the starters, we only play five blue starters. And then for the rest of the blues we went for a lot of block threes. Uh, so we've got three Love and Loyalty, three Selby Strike, three Sinnerskin Devotion. So we approach a lot of the Guardian matchups as matches where we're going to be blocking quite a lot so we're going to be blocking with two cards and then coming back with two cards like maybe block for six on a crush for week and then just come back with like or a spinal crush and then come back with like just a blaze headlong and then your last card you just arsenal so we basically have to accept it in the guardian matchups you're going to slow down a lot and you're going to block a bit you're going to play like they do you block a little bit and you attack a little bit and that's fine and if they ever do something against you that isn't um, going to be disruptive in any way so like if they just go like uh, rouse the ancients or in in enlightened strike you just hold all of your cards and attack them back so that's the way that we approach that matchup and the block threes are really integral to that plan And then we're on to the sideboard. So the main deck is actually, including the Phoenix Flame, is uh, 56 card, uh, 54 cards, uh, which means that we need to board in six cards in every matchup. Um, and there's some match, most there's some matchups where we board out a few cards as well, as in we board some out and we make some swaps. But six cards in every matchup is the way that we approached it. Um, and we got that by using a spreadsheet basically just i don't know if anybody else does that but we yeah we do a lot of spreadsheet work to try and like figure out the numbers of um like what look what we try to look at like what's the ideal deck list into olden look like what does the ideal deck list into fire look like what does the ideal deck into icelander look like and then from that we get a good understanding of like how the main deck looks and how the sideboard needs to look so the sideboard is like little packages of three uh, three or six. So this first little package, two uh, yellow blotters and a minimism. This is for uh, Icelander basically. So I'm pretty sure we only bought this in against the wizards. Um, Icelander, obviously, we want the extra belittles to pay through the frostbites. Hence, we need the extra blue minimism. But we also do this against Kano just because we want to have more resources uh, floating so we can arcane barrier. Um, then we have like a package of six. So this is how we sideboard against like the aggro decks. So, two double strike, two lava and loyalty, and two that all you got. So these are sort of just like filler cards because we need just some random little attacks. Um, and the that all you got, like they come in against Runeblade to block the Zetathorn, uh, but I get also really useful against Ninja. Um, yeah, these are just filler. So these things could end up being something better. I'm not entirely sure if like we should just play like three head jab because uh, the lava and loyalty is. Like if you have an awkward hand and you don't have go again, it's probably because you've got lava and loyalty in your hand. And yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of this card, but double striker has been fine this weekend. Um, the rest of the cards are sideboard. So we've got three um, going first cards. So two of this round's on main energy potion. So we, we sideboard these in when we're going first against Fi specifically, or uh, Katsu, I suppose, so just Ninja. Um, and we take out three Cinderskin Devotion uh, for these in, in replacement. So. 
the, the general plan with this is just to get something accomplished on turn one uh, because we're probably not going to be attacking. Uh, we also sideboard the energy potion when we go first against Olden and we sideboard this in against Icelander as well. Uh, just having a, an energy potion in play against Olden or Icelander to protect you from Ice React or Stalagmite is, is a big, or Blizzard is a big deal. Um, then this is my favourite part of the sideboard to be honest, so we have three Sink Below and three Enlightened Strike. So when I was talking earlier about our plan into um, Guardian, about like playing a more of a blocking game and, a, and a two card, playing off two card hands better, so this is where Enlightened Strike comes in. So a two card hand, like block with two of our blues or a blue and a Sink Below, and then you come back with an Enlightened Strike for seven. Like they can't Ice Wreck you because you've got no cards, they can't Blizzard you because you don't have to go again. Um, they just have to deal with seven, and it's really good if you get Spinal Crush as well. So if you get Spinal Crush, you lose go again. You just go, okay, I'll just block a little bit, and I'll attack you once for seven. Um, and sometimes, like I did uh, this play against Olin, where he ice reacted me early in a turn. Like I attacked him for three with go again. He ice reacted me immediately, and I put a Sink Below on top of my deck, and then played in Light Strike to draw a card, and then I can just Arsenal the Sink Below. So like. Yeah, the Enlight Strikes are crucial, and they're really good against Icelander as well, um, for the same sort of reasons as Olden. They, they want to like disrupt your turn by playing something in the middle of it. If your turn is just Enlightened Strike, the seven, they, they can't Blizzard you, they can't like, give you a, they give you a Frostbite if they want, but you, you're done. Um, so that's the general plan around Enlight Strikes, so I think that is a must play. And the Sink Belows, they basically just come in against Guardian, just to play more of a blocking game, because again, they're going to be swinging at you with big things, so Sink Belows is the best option there. Uh, I think just the equipment left to yeah, right. go through. Um, Maybe you can show the trophy afterwards too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so some of the UK guys are playing um, are playing Harmonized Kadachi because they like to build up chain links to be able to get mask of momentum hit a bit easier. Uh, to me, my my first weapon is the Syrian Blade. My set, my Kadachi is this little guy on the side here. So. I, I much prefer the Ember Blade of, uh, of the Kadachis, uh, just to build up the Draconic Chain Links. Mask of Momentum, we play into um, everything apart from Wizard or um, Wizard or Olden. Mm. So okay. against Olden, we play Mask of the Panting Links because Olden is a really good deck at blocking. So any any deck that's really good at blocking, you don't want Mask of Momentum really. You want to do Mask of Panting Links. So yeah, Mask of the Pouncing Links only comes in against them. For their, everything else you want to do Mask of Momentum, yeah. um, just to maximise the on-hits. Uh, we've got Flame Skull Furnace. Furnace, yeah. So we play this into basically everyone. I think the only other chest that we play is um, Findle Spring Tunic and we play this against so we play this against Icelander because we don't think they'll be attacking us like basically ever. Like Wounded Bull is, if they Wounded Bull you, that is a losing proposition for them because that means they have either, well it means they've kept two cards in their hand to attack you for eight. They've probably taken six to do that or at least six to do that. So that's fine with us. Um, so we want Tunic in the matchup uh, to help pay for Frostbites and stop, uh, it'll also pay for Coronet Peak every now and again, which is a big deal. Uh, we also play, play uh, Spring Tunic into Dramai because um, it helps us get big belittle turns where you take your Tunic count for belittle and you get like a five card hand from that. And Dramai is going to have to play defensive in the matchup, which means you get to be cheeky and play a Tunic instead of a, a Thermos. Um, Side Trap Shuko, so I think, is this the only arms that we play? Yeah, this is the only arms that we actually play. So we play this in every matchup. Um, now that Stubby Hammers is gone, there's no other option. Um, and then our two legs, so we play Tide Flippers and Snapdragon Scalers. Um, so only one AB. Uh, the reason for this is because Icelander often gives you two opportunities to prevent arcane damage. They give you uh, the, the spell that they play from Arsenal and the, the Waning Moon, which means if you want to AB2, like you can just pay twice if you want. Um, if they do stuff on your turn, they're going to give you Frostbites and you often not have enough resources to be able to pay for Frostbites and pay for a bunch of blocking, so yeah. AB1 is uh, is what we came up with. Um, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's basically everything. And we, yeah. Me and Jacob uh, went 9-1 and one in over 10 rounds with the deck. Um, really happy with it, and I think it's favoured into the other versions of Fi, so we're going to continue playing it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's, uh, I think, something that we will see with Dynasty now, what will change. Yeah. And uh, also, like, I think you forgot one thing to mention, because one card is not here anymore, right? One card is not here anymore. You gave it away. Oh, yeah, so I, I got a... <laughs> So I got a gold foil uh, mask of momentum. Uh, not this one. This is just a rainbow foil one. Uh, just just a rainbow foil one. Uh, so I got the the pre graded nine plus uh, gold foil mask of momentum, and I went straight to my friend at PCG uh, Premier Card Grading to give it to them. So they're going to uh, grade that for me and get their world stamp, post it back to me, and I'm hoping for hoping for a nine point five or ten. I didn't really look at yeah, it too man, closely. Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> yeah, and I got the got the cool. Pretty cool trophy as well. Yes. I don't know if you can see that nicely, but yeah, it's engraved as well here, which is really cool. So that's going to go up on my mantelpiece. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's been an amazing weekend, and uh, I played a lot of five. Yeah. Drafted it both times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you have any shoutouts to give at the end? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I guess I can shout out uh, Jacob Bean's hand. So he was my main. Uh, testing partner, uh, Mad Dog Matt Duggan, uh, and Chimpers James Thurgood as well. So <laughs> they're my three friends that I uh, tested for this event. And yeah, there's my shout out. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you so much for giving me this deck profile and letting the world know what you think about it. Awesome, thank you.